What's up, my fellow Michiganians, Michiganders, whatever you happen to call yourselves. Welcome to Wolverine State Sports Talk, and today I want to say some good things about the Detroit Lions, because last week I was very hard on them, and some of the things I said last week still stand. Like, I still think we blew an opportunity to build a championship roster, and obviously I didn't like taking Gibbs at 12. We passed on a couple guys I wanted. It is what it is. I've already said my piece on that. But I will say this, too. We're not in this position without Brad Holmes. We don't have the opportunity to build a championship roster last offseason without the work of Brad Holmes. As hard as I've been on him for the misses, my gosh, his hits have been a thing of beauty. And some of, and I think what we saw in this Atlanta game today is some of his TBD players really stepped up. I mean, look at Melo Fonwu. Melo Fonwu, two very big pass breakups, two big hits on third down. That was a game changer. Like, I, I saw flashes of potential with Mel Fonwu when he was covering uh, Adams uh, in his rookie year and actually did a pretty good job. He was in great position. He's been riddled by injuries, but he's kind of a guy I kind of wrote off as, eh, may have, may have not been the greatest pick, whatever. He was in the fifth round. Now he's starting to step up. Derek Barnes is another guy. You know, I've been very hard on Aaron Glenn, but I like the fact that he got creative against Atlanta. Putting Derek Barnes in the dirt, you know, mixing up some blitz packages. He, when you don't have the world's greatest talent on defense, you got to find creative ways to get everyone involved. And sometimes guys have a skill set you might not know about, such as Barnes' ability to play on the edge. Who would have thought that he'd do a good job of that? But man, that was a really nice sack right there. And Barnes has actually played really well all year. Um, maybe not so great in pass coverage last week, but man, in terms of most improved player, I'd say Derek Barnes is easily up there. He he looks like he belongs on the field. And I think that's honestly a reason why we haven't seen Jack Campbell that much on the field. I think Barnes has just really shocked everybody. So, yeah, we've, like, some of those guys that we might have written off is, uh, they might have been okay picks from Holmes, whatever. They're starting to step up now. And my hope is that Owens Rika is one of those guys, too. I heard great things about him in camp. I want to see more of it on the field. Um... But otherwise, yeah, I mean, that's just some of the more obscure picks that Holmes made. But some of the late round picks that have succeeded, man, they've been they've been awesome. And some of the free agent pickups that we might not have, not have thought much of, such as Anzalone and uh, Josh Reynolds, they're making a big impact on this team. And then obviously the guys like Amon Ross St. Brown, Houston's injured, but last year he had a huge impact on this team. Some of those late round guys and then Kyle Freeman out of the undrafted free agent. Detroit's not in those in this position without those guys. And what this shows me is Detroit's capable of finding late round talent and Detroit is also capable of developing talent. Which, as hard as I was on Holmes for missing on some second round guys, the truth is we don't we might not know how good Pascal and Owens Arike really are. Cause we all thought Anzalone was horrible. We all thought Goff was horrible his first year. But look at how much they've developed. And maybe that's a sign that this might not quite be the same old Lions. I know I used that term a couple weeks ago. Like some of the misses, the obvious misses in this past draft, the first round specifically, that felt like SOL. But what, what doesn't feel like it is the fact that Detroit is actually developing players and guys are actually getting better. You see, in years past, we take a project like uh, Jahani Tavai, Alex Van Noy, and we'd completely fail to develop them. Or those guys would go to different teams and then they'd look a lot better. I'm not really seeing that happen. I'm seeing us either get guys that get it immediately or guys that might not start off so hot, but eventually get better. And I think Rodrigo's a candidate too. I, I think Rodrigo's very athletic as a linebacker. I think the biggest thing is if he can work on his coverage ability, I think he's got what it takes to play linebacker in this day and age. So we'll have a very good linebacker room. The fact is, Brad Brad's great drafting in the late rounds has gotten us a lot of depth. That's why we were able to be fine in the secondary without two of our key starters. I mean, Tracy Walker and Kirby Joseph, a lot of people would take those two guys as starters. Oh, excuse me, it was uh, Melifondi that was starting, my bad. A lot of people would take those two guys as starters and their backups on this team. And the good thing, too, is when you're this deep and guys have reps and you know, this is why I like having Okora and Harris on the team as well. I want to see them step up a little bit more. They might be able to. Is you can 
you can kind of take your starters out during the game. And then in the fourth quarter, when the other team is absolutely winded, you're fresh. Aiden Hutchinson, if he's not playing very many snaps, guess what? In the fourth quarter, he's completely fresh, ready to fire off the ball, while the offensive tackle's like... <sighs> so depth is important. And obviously, when you get injured, like we've been getting, being able to plug another guy in and succeed is big. And you saw that on the offensive line. They kind of held their own despite everyone getting hurt. But the big thing is they found a way to win with injuries. They found a way to win with guys that we might have not touted as being key players. The fact is Brad Holmes is doing a lot of things right. And every GM makes mistakes. Howie Roseman, I think, is the best GM in the NFL. And he made some horrendous mistakes when he started with Philly. Anyone remember Chip Kelly trading with LaShawn McCoy and signing DeMarco Murray to that big contract? That was a complete disaster. But ever since then, he's learned a lot from it. And, you know, the fact is we know Holmes can find late-round talent. And even some of the guys that didn't work out, they're talented. They just have injury history. Like James Mitchell, honestly, James Mitchell could make an impact. I know we haven't heard much from him yet, but I, I like him a lot. But he might be a guy that might not do much either because of his injury history. But the fact is Brad's taking talented people. Even the first round, as much as I complained about it, Campbell and, Gib or, uh, Campbell and Gibbs, they're talented. And they're going to make an impact on this team probably later down the road. And they already are, but they're going to be more the star players that we're looking for later down the road. And maybe Broderick Martin could be that guy in two or three years. Maybe not yet. But the fact is, the Lions seem to have a formula here. And this is why I believe in Dan Campbell, even if Ben Johnson goes. I think we still have a coaching staff that develops players. And it's not a coincidence that guys get better and better every game as the year goes on. The defense improved immensely as the year went on, and it could be the same way this year. So there's a lot to be excited about. And this game really showed us a lot about the Lions. And it was I said it was a must-win game. And they took care of business and looked great. The SOL would have lost this game and season be over. But now I think you're in a position where you can kind of, like, these games don't feel so, oh, if we don't win, we're not going to, we're completely out of the playoffs. Like, starting 2-1 and one is totally different from 1-2. and two. Honestly, 1-2 and two is even totally different from, like, 3-4. and 3-4, and four, you still have a shot. 1-2, and two, though, you're kind of behind the eight ball. The biggest thing is you don't want to start 0-3 because the odds look very bad for that. So it's good that we're not in that situation. This Thursday, honestly, I'm going to say this. I expect the Lions to win. The Super Bowl's not on the table for the Lions yet, but I think the expectations for the Lions are to host a playoff game and win in the first round. I think that would be a very successful season, and they're more than capable of doing it. But what would show that they're capable of doing those two things would be going to Lambeau Field and beating a team that they're better than. Green Bay is not as bad as we thought they were to start the year. I think they have some great pieces, and obviously Jordan Love has stepped up. But the fact is, when you look at the way they've played versus the way we've played, we've played, for the, through the first three games, we played better than their first three games. I mean, they barely beat a New Orleans team at home. And New Orleans didn't have their quarterback in the second half. New Orleans was up 17 to nothing. I don't think they're going to do that against us. Atlanta, a team we totally dominated. Green Bay gave up a late lead to. Desmond Ritter kind of had his way. And then week one, the Packers played a mirage of a football team called the Chicago Bears. They're a complete joke. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say just based off the first three games, the Lions are the better football team. And... The Lions have the deeper roster. They have the better quarterback. So they should win this game, even if it's at Lambeau Field. If they lose this game, it's not the end of the world because you understand that it's a tough place to play and anybody in the NFL can have a great game. So I'm not going to panic if we lose this football game. But however, it would sure be nice gravy. It'd make me feel. It'd make me and this team feel very confident about the rest of the season. Honestly, this win against Atlanta really built up my confidence. It made me feel like, all right, maybe last week we just didn't bring our A game, you know. I know we're not an elite football team, and last week confirmed that, but we're not as bad as we were last week either. So, yeah, if this Detroit team's for real in terms of doing something they haven't done since 1991, I think these are the kind of games you win. So I think everyone's going to be ready. They're going to be fired up. 
that's one thing about Dan Campbell that I like is I never worry about if the team's going to be ready to go. They're always going to be ready to go. It's just a matter of can Aaron Glenn continue to put together defensive schemes that puts people in the situation to succeed. That's really the biggest thing. If we can see that from week to week, you know, just giving up, even just giving up 20, 21 points, we should be in great shape. Not giving, letting the team run up and down the field like Seattle. So, yeah, I have, I have good confidence about this season right now. Even with some of the injuries, I think our schedule is very favorable that honestly we could win 11 or 12 games. If we played a tougher schedule, I wouldn't say that, but I think the NFC North is looking pretty weak and the AFC West also was a very bad division and we already beat their best team. So we could easily win all three of those games too. Guys, destiny's in our hands and I got to give Brad credit for putting us in this situation. As much as I criticized him last week, the truth is Brad put us in a position this offseason to have us build a championship team and he made a lot of great moves and he made some moves I didn't like, but you know what? That's, GM, that's GM's for you. And I think he's going to continue to get better as he's a GM with the Lions. All right, thank you all for watching. Go Lions, and you all have a good rest of your night.